Let me read that again. If you abide in me, Jesus said, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So it will be done unto you when you become familiar with the Word of God and getting that Word inside of you in your spirit and your mind, cleaning your mind, getting your mind renewed at the Word of God. You're not going to ask anything outside of the will of God. And so this is effective praying, learning the covenant, learning the Word of God. So we have talked to you, we've shared with you the general golden text, the two general golden texts. We call them golden text because when you use these two verses of scripture, teaching prayer, you can move in any direction you want and, and just you know, generalize about what prayer is all about. So uh, as we want to talk about, let's, let's talk about for a second, you know, what is prayer? You know, prayer could mean a lot of things, a lot of people, everybody in every religion prays. Every religion, they have a certain procedure to do it. They have certain ways to do it. And sometimes, you know, people who are, you know, sometimes they get mad at me or get mad at church people or mad at Christians or mad at somebody who, who believes in God. They say, you know, we don't have to be at church to pray. Well, that's true. You don't have to be in church to pray. Uh, you could be anywhere. They say, well, people say, well, I could just be in the bush and pray. Well, sure, you could be in the bush and pray. But you can pray anywhere, all the time, because Ephesians 6, 18 says praying always. You can pray in the mall. You can pray while you're driving. You can pray uh, while you're boating. You can pray while you're fishing. You can pray while you're having a meal. You can pray anywhere, anytime, all the time. You have to be alert in prayer. And so, um, so what is prayer? Basically, uh, it's communication with God. Prayer is communing with God, talking to God. It's you listening to God and God talking to you and you're listening to what He's saying to you. And so basically, uh, it's, it's this. Prayer is you talking to God. Prayer is God talking to you. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is fellowshipping with God. Prayer is a dialogue. Not a monologue. It's not you just talking to God and you sitting there wherever you are just, just communicating with God and telling Him what you want and, and like He's, you know, your servant. Tell Him, God, I want this right now. Uh, heal me right now. God, give me this stuff. Make sure you're doing this, doing that. Give Him a whole bunch of lists. We used to uh, think about over the years, people used to talk about their prayer list, you know. And they always itemize how many things they put on their prayer list and they go to their prayer closet in the morning and they're very religious about it. They'll have a prayer list and they'll go into a closet. Uh, you know, when I say closet, I mean, you know, their, their secret place in their home, whatever, designated. They'll pray about different things. And they'll, they'll have this itemized thing and they'll pray uh, to God. And, and, and so uh, they'll have all this thing. And they'll have a religious exercise. And, and so prayer is not just a religious exercise. It's a living communicative, uh, you know, thing with God, talking to God, just like you would with your best friend, your wife, or whatever it is. So, so it's communication with God, talking to God. So uh, when we talk about prayer, you know, we're communicating, you know, everybody wants to communicate um, with their spouse, with their children. They want to communicate with their best friend, or they want to communicate uh, as, a, as a good leader in a, in, a, in a job position, say, for instance, your supervisor, your manager, Maybe you're um, an ED or uh, some kind of executive, and you want to communicate with your 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 staff. Uh, you you have to have good skills. You have to have a good procedures to do that, and so you have to be able to communicate uh, with your whole self. Uh, not just say words, but you have to communicate with your your body, your your body language, and and your intonations, and how you how you say different things. You know, you could say a word, but also um, Saying, not just saying words, but the way you say things means a whole lot. So we can read into people about different things. Say so if you're praying and uh, you don't look enthusiastic about it, you know that maybe perhaps you need to get some enthusiasm uh, through studying the Word and understanding that yeah, this is a happy time. This is something exciting. Uh, and you're not just praying just to exercise some, spirit, uh, some spiritual uh, religious uh, duty. You're doing it because it's vital, it's new, it's, it's alive to you, and you're doing it because you, you're talking to God and you're excited because God is talking to you. So then what is effective prayer? Let's go over here um, uh, and, and read a scripture verse. Um, let's go to 
James chapter 5, verse 16, and we're going to look at verse 16 in the second part of verse 16. Uh, so, verse James chapter 5, verse 16b. And we're talking about what is effective prayer or what is effective praying. So, uh, it says here, confess your faults to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. Now, this is what we're talking about, the second part. The effective, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So we want to talk about effective praying. What is effectual prayer? What does that mean? Well, it really means, generally means this. It means heartfelt prayer. It means a seriousness about it. It's not just a casual, uh, you know, speaking about different things. doesn't really matter. When you're, when you're effectively praying, you're actually really, really demonstrating some serious praying. So people who are serious about prayer, serious about communicating with God, serious about telling God what His Word says, and what, you know, when I say what His Word says, just praying based on the Word, that's what I mean. When you're praying to God, and you're praying based on His Word, and you're actually hearing God, this is effective praying. And so, you cannot hear God unless you know His Word, unless you know His Spirit. So these are important qualities to have when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're praying. So um, effective, fervent prayer. So what is, what is being effective? It, it means, effective means, effective prayer means you're basing your praying on Bible principles. You're ba not, not anything, not on feeling. You say, well, I had a good prayer, effective prayer time. Why, uh, why would you say that? Well, because I just felt good. I just felt something. I just felt something lift. Well, you're not going to base your prayer just on something lifting. You feel like something is lifted. Uh, you know, that could be just an emotional thing, could be just a soulish thing, uh, that based on your own emotion, based on, on your experience. We don't base our prayer on experiences. We base our prayer on principles. We base our prayer on the, you know, the ever, uh, you know, strong Word of God. It never changes. That's what we're basing our prayer on because feelings will come and go. And so, so effective praying means that you're basing your prayer on principles. And so it, it talks about in their fervency, the effective fervent prayer. Well, fervent prayer is, is based on, like I said, it's not a casual thing. It's something you're, 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 you're getting your whole self involved. You're getting your spirit involved. You're getting your, 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 your soul involved. You're getting your mind involved, your emotion. You're just praying based on the Word. But your emotion and your, and your mind is based on the, the principles of God's Word. That's, that's uh, being effective in your prayer line. You're not, you're just not going to the prayer, prayer closet and you're praying uh, something casual that it didn't mean anything. So you have to check your heart. Check your heart if you're praying, you know, uh, because it's based on the Scripture. You're excited about the Word of God. That's where, base, that's where things happen, you know. Uh, this man of God I admire very much says, you know, when things will happen in your life, when you start getting excited about the Word of God, you got to get that Word in you. Now let's go over here. James, you know, he says, he's the one that's writing this, um, effective prayer. He says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, uh, some here, some people will say, well, I wish I was righteous. Well, you are righteous based on the scripture. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, because Jesus is your righteousness. The Bible says we became righteous by faith in Jesus. That's how we became righteous. We'll talk about righteousness later where that part, uh, where that plays a part in our lives. But you as a born-again Christian have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 21, uh, verse 17 to 21 talks about, you know, we're new creatures and, and verse 17. Then verse 21 says that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You are righteous right now. And it has nothing to do with, with your, you doing anything. It's just Jesus made you righteous. You, you were born a righteous person. Your nature is righteous. And God says that you can have effectual, fervent prayer. And let's go to uh, this uh, James 5, 17 and 18. It says here, James 5, 17, Elias, or Elijah, was a man subject to like passions uh, as, as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth, but a space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, 
and the heaven gave rain. This is verse 18. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Let's read this in the, um, the Amplified Classical Edition. He says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings and affections and a constitution like ours. Now, he's, uh, you know, James is using Elijah, the prophet Elijah here, um, like he's comparing his nature or, or his humanity with us, that we're, we're like him. He relates us like him. You know, th this man, we think about this, we revere this man. This man was a great prayer man. You know, he, he prayed down fire and he prayed had rain coming down and, and, you know, he had supernatural signs and wonders in his life. And the Bible talks about, uh, you know, he, he, James here, he says, he, this guy is like us when he's using this prayer um, example. He says in here uh, that, he, that he prayed earnestly and, and, uh, and for it not to rain. And the rain fell on, earth, uh, fell on the earth for three years and six months, and no rain fell, it says, for three uh, years, three and a half years. And um, so we see that over in Second King or First Kings 17. We see this example uh, over if you go in the Old Testament. And then he prayed again, it says, and the heavens supplied rain, and the land produced its crops as usual. This is First Kings uh, chapter 18, verses uh, 42 to 45. And, uh, you know, why was this man passionate in his prayer? Why was he so passionate? Why was he so enthused about it? I'm going to tell you this, because he heard from God. He heard God's word. You know, these prophets had the word of the Lord come unto them. And, and in those days, there was no, nothing they could refer to, but the word of the Lord came unto them in that way. They, you know, they had certain things they were back then. But, in this instance, this man had the word of the Lord. And you and I, uh, when we're praying, we need to get the word of the Lord on something. We need to understand and get, when you, ha when you have the word inside of you, you're going to pray with fervency because you're so excited what the word says. And you're praying the outcome. You're praying from the side of victory because you already see the victory in the word of God. So when you pray, you're praying from that position. So uh, this man, Elijah, knew God. He knew something about God. He knew his character. He knew God's word doesn't fail. He knew that he could be, God could be trusted. So let me just give you three basic foundations for prayer. First of all, number one, if you're going to have a foundation for prayer, number one, have faith in God. Number one, have faith in in the God of the Bible. Have faith in the God of the Bible. Here in Hebrews 11, 6, the scripture says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you need to have faith in this God. Let's go read on. For he that cometh to God must but believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So have faith in God. Believe that God exists. Believe that God is real. Believe that there is the God of the Bible. Believe that he's a rewarder. When you go to God, re remember that he is a rewarder. He will reward you according to the standard of what he said in his word. He'll do what he said he would do. So that's why we read the scriptures, read the word, and find out. You know, this is not a hit and miss thing. You don't just say, well, I prayed, I hope so, I got something. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they don't know that... Uh, you know, if their prayer has been answered, they, they have no confidence, uh, so they can't be thankful. They can't really be praising God. They can't be, be waiting for God because they don't know that God heard them. They just pray. Pray to the sky. Pray that hoping something's going to happen, that maybe there's a chance something's going to happen. Maybe God might hear them. Maybe God, you know, you have to have this understanding that God hears you when, when you pray. The Bible says in First Peter over there, uh, I believe it's chapter 3, verse 12, that God's, God's eyes are running through over the righteous and His ears are open unto their prayer. 1 Peter 3 and 12, I believe it is. He says that God is looking over the righteous. That's you and me, we're righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And His ears are open unto their prayer. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying uh, the segments that we're teaching on prayer uh, uh, for part two. So uh, it's going to be a great thing. I'm really enjoying this. I believe the anointing is there. The power of God is flowing. 
I believe you're getting revelation and uh, uh, message me. Let me know uh, how this is blessing you and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you in, in part three.